I'm sitting here with uh, Cheryl Williams, who's locked into a very uh, high stakes runoff with Jerry Hoagland for commissioner, for county commissioner of Precinct 2. Thank you very much for talking to us, Cheryl. Well, thank you, Bill, for coming out and uh, sitting down with me. Uh, let's go right into it. Uh, you're probably given uh, Commissioner Hoagland his biggest election challenge in many, many years. Um, what do you consider to be the major issues in the campaign? Well, I consider um, taxation and, and planning, transportation issues. Um, I consider the fact that um, Mr. Hoagland is uh, financing his campaigns almost entirely with uh, money from people who do business with the county or seek to do business with the county. I think that while there's nothing illegal about it, it, it really is something that needs to stop. And I think it, it makes people feel like they don't have a say in their own government and that there's some other, um, you know, there's other special interests that are having a much, much greater influence than voters. Very good. Thank you. Um, you mentioned roads. Let's talk about roads for a bit. There's been a lot of discussion about the Lake Levon Bridge in Precinct 2, um, but that bridge is tied into the whole master plan, and especially in the expansion of, of Parker Road and uh, the construction of the uh, eastern uh, leg of the outer loop. Uh, looking at the outer loop, the Commissioner's Court has spent about two years now without success trying to find a formula to finance it. Um, and meanwhile, the uh, community's resistance to toll roads seems to be stiffening. What are your thoughts on how this region and county are going to develop Loop 9? Do you think we will in our lifetime? Well, I certainly hope in my lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do think that uh, transportation projects in general are, are very difficult at, right now. And, of course, with what's happening in Washington, I don't foresee that we're going to get a lot of relief. But the state, I think we still have to expect that the state is going to have to find a new way to fund um, roadways, and they're going to have to stop the diversions of gasoline tax. Um, and then um, I don't know that our reliance on toll roads will ever completely go away, but at the same time, we've got to, I think we have to have a balance of, of roadways so that not every roadway you get on is a, is a tollway. Uh, but when you're looking at projects like the Outer Loop, uh, I think that probably tolling is the only alternative that we we'll probably will we'll be able to have. But the state needs to be uh, picking up their fair share and participating uh, adequately. And I, I'm very concerned about Collin County, um, you know, our money being sucked away from Collin County to deal with projects in other parts of the state. So we need to work very diligently to keep that from occurring so that what funds we do have, we're able to keep in Collin County and work on, on um, transportation issues here. Uh, you mentioned the bridge. Uh, I do think that the, it is all tied in, but I think there was uh, some, some real questions raised about the study that was done for the bridge and whether or not uh, that, that there has been a, a land solution really fully uh, reviewed. And if you look at the maps that um, COG provided during for that study, they, they show a map that has a lot of congestion on it, and then they show a map if all the projects um, that are on the master plan were built, uh, that has a lot of reduction in, in congestion, but it does not include the bridge. So all that reduction in congestion could occur without having a bridge over Lake Levon. That was, a, that was kind of a critical piece of information for me when, when looking at that bridge. Um, we, I think we, we're, we're going to have to focus on pushing our state and our state representatives to try and get our fair share of funding into Collin County, and we may have to do, to do some toll roads, uh, minimal if possible, but I think that we ultimately may have to have uh, additional toll roads. You answered my next question, too, which had to do with uh, where the money is going to come from. Um, yeah, Col you are right. Collin County is a donor um, uh, county uh, uh, to both the federal gas tax, the state gas tax, and even in, uh, in co within the COG region. <coughs> we, we certainly pay more than we get out of it, and it is a major concern. Um, but let's talking about mobility, let's continue along that line. Denton County is one of the um, 
is very very interesting in the sense that it's building its own um, uh, transit authority. And they broke ground this week on 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 uh, heavy rail that will connect uh, Denton to uh, Dart. They run buses up and down I-35 to get people in and out from Denton to downtown Dallas. They're doing it fast. They're doing it very cheap. That the uh, uh, Denton Toll Road Authority, I think, is I mean Denton Transit Authority has only been in existence for seven or eight years now. Um, should Collin County be pursuing a similar in initiative? Uh, do you think we maybe should expand DART, or do you think toll roads are the answer? Where do you see? What do you see as the answer to the dilemma of how we move people around as we get more and more crowded? Uh, well, I will tell you that I'm not terribly in favor of increasing the use of rail until we see. Um, a much higher uh, numbers of people using it currently. And I also am very concerned about imposing anything on any of our cities. I think that if cities want to take that route, we need to have a lot more discussions with them about what the options are. Um, it's complicated with, with DART in the picture, of course, with Richardson, DART, and Dallas, and we do have portions of Dallas in Collin County. Uh, being uh, involved in DART, they've paid in very large sums of dollars uh, into DART to have uh, access to public transit. So um, expansion of DART, uh, and of course you may have read recently, DART is, is talking about really backing off because the sales tax that they're receiving has dropped so dramatically that they're not, they're talking about um, significant delays in, in what they are proposing, what they had on their master plan. So I'm not sure that DART is the is the answer to that. But I think that before we would even consider something like a mass transit plan, we would have to get the buy-in or better or at least the interest from cities and, and make sure that, that that is the direction that they would want to go and then then I wouldn't be interested in moving forward with something if we did not have a plan that could pay for it and in, in, um, in a reasonable in a reasonable way. I, I think it's a very diff I think get mass transit is a difficult thing to get uh, suburban cities to um, buy into. Yeah, a light rail is certainly very expensive. Well, thank you, thank you very much. Um, I appreciate you uh, sitting down with me. I'd like to do it again, and we'll ask some more questions here. Uh, Cheryl, good luck to you and your campaign. Thank you.